this is another use case brought by Chris Hankin from Dallas, which reflects the new way of really working in Curator, which is much faster to get the Curator to do what you want. Uh, his requirement was, I want to monitor unsuccessful login to my PCI servers. Chris could have go ahead and create his rule, but he knows that the app exchange has a lot of things already built for many users. So he actually went to the app exchange and in looking in there, he found precisely a compliant package. Let's take a look at it. There are so many things here and the that is kind of hard to find, but he found an updated version of the security compliance uh, content. And let's see what's in it. It's really a great deal of, uh, of addition. So notice all the searches that you get in here that replace uh, existing one or, uh, and, and also adds a bunch of new ones. Reference sets being used, tons of reports and what he was looking for are really rules. This one is kind of interesting. Precisely multiple logins, failures from a single user. But it's way too general. I mean, it's going to catch not only on the PCI servers, but on the other ones. It's a good one. But uh, let's see if we have something more specific, being this a compliance package for something to my comp compliance uh, package. Uh, so look at this one in particular is even more interesting multiple failed logins to a compliance asset so it's very it's trivial to actually add this to your curator so let's go ahead and take those take a look at those rules and see if we need to modify them or to complement them to have them work for us so here i'm in the offenses tab and i'm going to click on the rules The first rule was on the group authentication, so I put authentication here just to reduce the amount of rules that I want, I'm looking for. And here's the rule I want to use. So if we click on the rule to see if we need to modify anything in it, we see that this is uh, works with a building block called on the category definitions called authentication failures. And I actually changed the rule instead of 100 events, I put it to 25 because that's what we are going to be replaying the, the, the events uh, for triggering the rule to testing the rule. And I put three minutes instead of five minutes. So, But if, if I'm interested in looking at, well, what is it, what are all the authentication failures that this rule actually covers? Well, then all I need to do is actually list that building block. Let's do that. So I go, I go here into the rules, and instead of looking at rules, I'm going to look into building blocks. So that was on the category definitions group of building blocks, and here it is. Authentication failures. And here you can see all the things that you don't need to know. How does an authentication failure look like? These are the things that Curator already knows, and it's going to be looking for you on that particular rule. Very simple. We don't have to do anything more with this rule. It's ready to work. Let's look at the other rule. So I put the group here, Compliance, and this is the rule that we are interested. So let's open it up and see if we need to do something to make it work for us. So in here, we need to actually specify which are my PCI DSS servers. That's a particular, uh, uh, that, that part of the building block is going to determine, okay, out of all the login failures, which are the one on my PCI servers. So if we'll go back to displaying building blocks, this is the building block that that rule was actually referring to. Let's see what we did to actually make it work for us the way we want it. Our uh, PCI servers in this particular demo system are part of the subnet 192.168.11. All those are defined as PCI servers. So what we did is actually we click in here and added, added that uh, particular subnet 
to it. Now there's one more piece that is actually not needed for this particular rule, for the example that we are doing, but it's good to show it for completeness. If you want to also play with rules uh, on logs and flows that takes about context, local to remote, remote to local, that type of things, you actually need to specify to curator what is local, what's remote. I mean, and, and the best way of actually do that is to go into the network hierarchy and actually what we did is actually we in the regulatory and compliance servers we added that particular uh, uh, sub network here we, on the Unix compliance server. So you see the same 192, 168, 11 uh, subnet that is be actually being added. So now your local to remote, uh, remote to local uh, part of the rules will be working as well. That is now done. In a real system, the PCI servers, whether they are Windows, Unix, etc., Linux, etc., they're going to be sending logs to Curator when you ask them to send the logs to Curator, and Curator is going to auto discover them. For our demo, you know, they're not, not having to rely on that, we actually uh, created uh, manually this, uh, this log source for that particular server, and notice that this 65 server is part of that subnet, so it's going to be identified as a PCI server. Now we are ready to test our rule, and this is the the logs uh, that we actually took for generating uh, this particular event. As, as we can see, we have uh, around 20, 25 uh, events in which the username that is failing to log in is actually D Lee, right? And here is the shell script we're going to use to actually replay those particular logs. Let's actually go here before we run them. Let's go into the log activity and see the actual uh, logs. So I change that to real-time streaming to see just what we are going to be uh, actually playing and let's actually go ahead and replay those logs. And we see them coming here. Those are the login failures. And we can actually take a look at it this uh, this uh, event anomaly here for uh, for another ones. So here we see actually how rules uh, fi uh, firing multi login failures on the same user, multiple fail login to a compliance server. So this is what we were expecting to happen. If we go to the offenses tab, we see actually the two uh, the two rules that we were interested the multiple login failures. Uh, and this one, which is to the compliant asset. So let's take a look at this one and see it in more details. And if we actually display the rules that may this one fire, we see actually our two rules being put in there. And they are combined into one, uh, particularly because we, when we created the rules, we actually made them index. Let's actually go to the second pane here. Uh, we actually made it indexed on the same username for this one as well as the other one, and that's what they are combined uh, in the in the very single offense. So let's take a look at this one as well and see that this one also indexes under the username. So very simple way. We didn't have to write any rule. We just took a package from the App Exchange modify a few things, define our topology like we you probably already have done on your enterprise and you get this working for you. And there are tons of, of examples of this on the App Exchange or stuff for you that has been built for you, tested for you, so you can add it quickly to your production environment.